Hey, so are you finding that hanging out in these circles with the successful people, the winners, is actually making you feel worse than before? You feel even more like a failure than you did before, like a loser than you did before. The feeling that you're not good enough is stronger than ever. And if this is something you are experiencing, you're not alone, you're in the right place, because in this video, I'm gonna help explain to you why actually hanging out with the quote unquote winners is blocking you from reaching your full potential. And then I'm gonna explain to you who you need to surround yourself with to become the best version of yourself. Let's talk about it right now. And before we dive in, just wanna give you the heads up that this is what I do, what I've dedicated my life's work to. So if you need help, you need support, there's a link below the video to speak with me directly. And I'd love to be able to support you with this transformation that you are trying to make. And this can be disheartening because it feels like you're doing all of the right things and you're surrounding yourself with all of the right people. But for some reason, you feel more disconnected than you ever have. You feel more unhappy, more unfulfilled, more numb than you ever have. And, and how could this be? And I want you to notice what I said there. It feels like you're doing the right things, but in actuality, you're doing certain things. More importantly, the way you're going about doing these certain things is in perfect alignment. It's with absolute precision that these things are making you feel more anxious, depressed, and unhappy than ever before. So my utmost goal for this video is to raise your level of self-awareness, to raise your consciousness around this issue because if you don't, it's gonna feel like the more you try, the more things stay the same. I mean, we wanna get you out of the pattern, out of the cycle. Now, in order to raise your consciousness and raise your self-awareness, we wanna take a look at, we have to talk about essentially three dimensions that we experience as humans. And these three dimensions are the being, the doing, the having. So if we take a look at this diagram here, we have be, do, have, and just ignore this being because you've been ignoring it your whole life. No offense, but let's just ignore it for now. We're gonna talk about just the doing and having because we're all familiar with this. And these are the dimensions that most of us try to resolve our problems from. So do have, I'll give you an example here. You're going to the networking events, you're going and you're in the masterminds, for example, in these, these self-help groups, these self-improvement groups. So you're doing them. Why? Because you wanna have certain things. You wanna have friendships, you wanna have success, you want the, the wife, you want the career, you want the relationships, you want the connections. You're doing those things in order to have certain things. And you're convinced that if you have these certain things, you do certain things, you will have certain things. And when you have certain things, you're going to feel a certain way. When you have, for example, you have the career, you have the wife, you have the family, you have the connections, you have the social life, you're going to feel fulfilled. You're going to feel connected. You're going to feel happy. And again, you're doing these things. You're more social, for example, but for some reason, it's not changing the way you feel. You feel even more disconnected. You feel more like a failure, like you're not good enough. You feel more like there's something wrong with you. What gives here? And in order to explain this, we have to look over here. This is where your work begins. We have to direct our attention to the being aspect of ourselves. Now, super basic here, don't overthink this. Our psyches are essentially made up of three main areas. The unconscious, the subconscious, and the conscious. Think of, let's just start over here, ignore the unconscious and the subconscious. Let's start at the conscious. These are just the different thoughts and feelings that you have that you are aware of. For example, you know you get nervous, you know you think of what to say next. That is your conscious mind. And within our psyches, there is a place within our psyches called the seat of consciousness. The seat of consciousness. 
So I have a chair here in the diagram and I want you to think of the seat of consciousness as a projector. There's a projection screen. The seat of consciousness is the projector. What gets projected onto the screen, what we think, feel, believe, speak, and act, we can even take it further, our perspective, what we place our attention on, what we focus on, that depends on what is being projected onto the screen. Now, what determines what gets projected onto the screen? I want you to think about it this way. It really depends on the people, situations, and circumstances that you find yourself in. Let's say, for example, you are seeing somebody, you're in the presence of somebody that you are intimidated by and you feel inferior to them. Well, you're going to be thinking inferior thoughts, feeling inferior feelings. Internally, it's going to feel really uncomfortable. You're actually going to believe that you're inferior. You're going to be speaking like you're inferior. You're going to be acting like you are inferior to this person. Then, for example, let's say you leave the situation. Now, those inferior thoughts and feelings aren't there anymore. Why? Because that part or aspect of your personality is no longer occupying the seat of consciousness. Let's say you leave the situation now and now you're, you're convincing yourself that there's something wrong with you. Oh, there's something wrong with you. You're always going to be like this. Oh, you're never going to change. Now you're having different thoughts, feelings, different beliefs in that moment. So there's a different projection on the screen. Another example is we've all experienced this before is rage. We've all flown off the handle. All you see is red. You're thinking raging thoughts. You're feeling the rage. You believe this person is the cause of your problem. You speak the rage out. You act in a rageful way. And then again, you leave the situation. You're like, oh, geez, Oof, I might have overreacted. Why? Because the rageful aspect of your personality is no longer occupying the seat of consciousness. It's a more rational part that's come in and occupied the seat. And if this is making sense to you, the thoughts and feelings, they come and they go and they come and they go, and this is making sense, let us know in the comments. And naturally, you're going to be asking, well, what determines who's sitting in the seat? Remember I said it's the people, situations, and circumstances but why is it that, for example, when I talk to an authority figure, I regress into a little child. But when my coworker does, he doesn't feel anything. He just kind of thinks it's funny. And so we want to take this a step further because yes, it's the people, situations, and the circumstances, but more importantly, it is your unconscious mind. It's your wounds that you carry within you. Just like Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. This unconscious aspect of your mind is directing everything for you. And we want to get more familiar with this to build your awareness and raise your consciousness. So I want you to think of your wounds. These are the wounds that you carry from your past. Childhood, maybe it was from the abusive and neglectful home you grew up in. Maybe it was the wounds that you carried from your friend group and the bad experiences you had there. Maybe it's the heartbreaks from going after your goals and being heartbroken goal after goal after goal or pursuing that girlfriend, that woman, and getting your heart broken over and over again. Parents divorced and there's so many things that can happen to lead to the wounds that nothing I ever do is good enough. I never feel good enough. I don't feel lovable. I don't feel worthy. I feel like a loser. There's something wrong with me. There's something defective about me. But here's the thing. Here's how life works is we carry these wounds. We go through life. We get wounded. We carry these wounds, but we can't have this a part of our conscious mind. We have to make it unconscious. We have to shove it off into these far off places within our psyches. Why? Because we got to do life. We got to show up to work. We got to make money. We got to go on the dates. We got to go pursue our love interest. We have to go be social. We have to go do life and take part in society. But the thing is, when these wounds are unresolved, you leave them intact over here in your unconscious mind. 
it's really going to color the way we interact and relate to people. Think about it this way. When you have deep wounds, when you truly feel that you're not good enough and there's something wrong with you and nothing you ever do is going to be good enough, when you're in the presence of other people, are you going to be able to connect naturally and effortlessly and be fully engaged and present? Of course not, because this is going to be weighing you down. But what can we do, right? We got to do life. So what do we do? is we put on the mask and we adapt and have these subconscious or three automatic ways of relating to people that it doesn't feel authentic. It's not the real us, but we do our best. And so let's go through these three automatic ways or socially conditioned subconscious ways that you are relating to people. Again, these are all dissolving controlling and escaping is all in relation to other people, to the external world. So I'll give you an example of dissolving. Dissolving, for example, is let's say you're in, you're in a group, you're at the family barbecue, for example, or in your friend group, you dissolve, you camouflage for, uh, is another word for it, you dissolve into this predetermined role. You're the nice, chill guy, you're the one that never gets angry, that people don't take very seriously. You're the caretaker, for example, or you're always the one that ends up in the friend zone. You dissolve into this predetermined role. Next, it's controlling. So let's say now it's this beautiful woman that you are pursuing. And in order, for example, to date her, get her number, get to know her, get her to spend time with you, you use the, the social skills. A lot of pickup artists do this. Use the social skills, you learn charm, use the charisma, use your frames, bro. You use all of these techniques in order to control and manipulate the situation. And then you get her number, you, you spend time with her, maybe you sleep with her, and then after you're like, geez, what, what am I doing? I still... I still feel like a loser. Why? Because you're just controlling the situation instead of resolving the feelings inside. Last is escaping. So you're in a group of people, for example, you're in a work meeting or something like that, networking event, and the external situation, the people is just overwhelming. So you're just kind of checked out. You're dissociated. You're completely in your head. You can't get out. You don't even feel connected to yourself or your own body at that point. And other examples of this is maybe, maybe you're not even at, a, at an event or with people, maybe on your own, but you're into your addictions, alcohol, weed, porn. You're using these other escapes because being in external reality is just too overwhelming and you'd rather just numb yourself out. And so let's regroup here and let's get back to the point I was saying. Your unconscious, it drives everything. It determines who's Remember, sitting in the seat of consciousness, which determines what you think, feel, believe, act, speak. So for example, let's say you have some abandonment wounds going on. Abandonment, okay, well then, the part of you that needs to take care of everybody or pretends to be chill, right? Too afraid to have any needs or take up any space in the world. Dissolver is gonna be in the seat of consciousness. Let's say, for example, you just feel like a loser on the inside. You gotta prove yourself. You gotta prove that you're a man, that you're good enough, so you use the controlling. So then you're, the controlling aspect of your personality is in the seat of consciousness. Let's say you're just overwhelmed with terror, too emotionally overwhelmed, physical symptoms. So then again, the escaping aspect of your personality jumps at the seat and essentially takes over your experience and checks you out. And again, why is the being the most important aspect that you need to direct your focus, your energy, your time and your efforts towards is because Think about it, if you go to the networking event and you just end up being a caretaker or you end up being in your head the whole time, who you're being, remember, it's about doing things but doing them in a certain way. So if you're at the networking event and you're in your head the whole time, are you truly going to have the connections that you want or are you going to leave the place feeling more alone than you did before? Leave the place beating up on yourself. Leave the place feeling more disconnected than you did before. So remember, I want you to take this point in. If you take anything from this video, make sure you take in this next point. What you do and what you have will never change the way 
you feel. Your feelings are generated by your unconscious mind, your unconscious, which influences your subconscious and your conscious. This is where your feelings are generated. I'm gonna give you an example here. We had a, a student, a past student, he was doing really well, he's doing some great work, he was reducing all his social anxiety and because of that, he was speaking up so much more at work and then his boss started recognizing him because he was speaking up against the cross departments and changing things and saying, being really outspoken about the things he didn't like and his boss was like, yeah, like let's team up and let's, let's do some good work. And so he wants to go and apply for this promotion. And so he comes on a coaching call and he's extremely nervous, extremely stressed. He's got the interview coming up. He's like, oh, I'm just so nervous. I got, I just feel so much pressure on myself and I just don't want to let people down. And so what do we do? We don't worry about the doing and the having. He has to do the interview, okay? But what we need to understand is the being. We need to shift and raise his self-awareness. So I asked him, well, how come you're so nervous? And he says, well, because I want to do a good job, okay? Why do you want to do a good job? Because, you know, I want to show them... I wanna show them that I'm the man for the job. Okay, so why do you want them to know that you're the right man for the job? Because I, I, wanna, I, I have so much to offer, I have so much talent, I just, I just wanna give my gifts. Okay, why do you want to give your gifts? Why do you wanna display your talents? And then here we go. Because I wanna feel worthy. I wanna feel worthy one of those reactions okay so is it safe to say that there's a part of you there's a part of you buried deep down here that feels unworthy ah, and then he then he connected the dots there because until he heals his feelings of unworthiness he's just going to be the guy that does the interview in order to feel worthy. And then the interviewers are going to smell that off of him that he's just here just trying to prove himself. When in actuality, the interviewers, the people who are wanting to promote him potentially, they wanna know what's in it for them. So do you see the disconnect there? The unworthiness is clouding his ability to be of service to that team that's interested in him. And so we focused over here, we focused on his feelings of worthiness. Ultimately, that job that he went for, he didn't get that one. He didn't get that one, but what was the win for him? What was the breakthrough? Is his self-worth was no longer attached to getting that job or not. So when he didn't get the job, he didn't end up in a spiral beating up on himself, feeling like he's a loser, feeling like he's a failure. No, his win was he felt worthy even though he didn't get it. And because of that, he could move forward in a more fearless way. So for him, his win was, I don't care I didn't get it, big deal. I'm gonna keep going after it, and then I'm gonna keep going after the next one, and I'm gonna keep building my ability to show up and do these interviews and give my gifts. It's just a matter of time before he has the thing. But in this case, this is a very important thing, is when he does have it, he's not going to fear losing it. Why? Because he has it, but it's coming from a more secure place within him. And so let's bring this back to the point of this whole video, hanging out with the winners, hanging out with the successful people. It's not changing the way you feel. Why? Because the focus of these groups is on what you do and what you have. So you're hanging out with people who are only in the interest of what you do and have. They define being the best version of yourself mainly around what you do. Sometimes it's around what you have. Maybe it's some, some of them can be uh, a bit materialistic. I don't know how many mindsets I've been a part of at this point, but ultimately the point that I'm trying to get across is they're really focused on the doing and you know yourself just like a student. It doesn't matter how many interviews you do. 
if you feel unworthy. It doesn't matter how many networking groups you go to if you feel like you don't belong. It doesn't matter how many women approach and date and sleep with if you feel like a complete piece of shit on the inside. It's not going to change the way you feel. So what I suggest to you is you create for yourself another mastermind, another team around you that can help you focus on who you are being, that help that can help you see your blind spots. In other words, help you see the way you're dissolving, controlling, and escaping to avoid feeling through the wounds that you are carrying deep down inside yourself. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying don't go to the networking events, don't do the masterminds, don't hang out in the friend groups. It's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying this is an addition to your support structure. And again, this is only the only way to change how you feel, to work on these deep, deep wounds here. Remember the saying, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Until you work on that feeling like you're got not good enough, like there's something wrong with you, it'll follow you around wherever you go. You'll try to, try to fix your problems at the surface level and there that feeling is going to be again and you will call it fate. You will say to yourself, I guess this is just life. I guess this is just the way it's meant to be. And it's not. And if you need help and support with this, I have a program. So if you feel called to book that call below and I would love to be able to guide you on this journey that you're on. This is the work that I do. I help the underdogs, the men who weren't set up for success, but they're still reaching for the highest version of themselves. They're heavily into personal development, but they find themselves inexpressive. They're anxious. They, they're very self-conscious and they can't seem to be themselves around other people and they hate themselves for it. And I guide them to expressing themselves confidently, assertively, and connecting with people authentically by reducing their anxiety levels and loving themselves for it. Which is incredible because they get to be the self-assured man that they once put on a pedestal. They don't need to put them up on a pedestal because they become that man. They become proud of who they are and they can feel confident that anything in life is possible. And if this sounds like you, I would love to have a chat with you and see what's possible for you. So go ahead and book that call and I will see you soon. I'll see you in the next video.